So I'm going to do a quick monotype demo using watercolor this time. And I've taken for this, we're going to do a test. I've taken a plexi plate, and I, I don't know if you can tell on the video, but I've sanded, let's see if you can see it that way. So this half of the plate, I sanded with sandpaper. This half of the plate, I left plain. And then this bottom of the plate, I rubbed in some Dawn dishwashing liquid, thin layer, and let it dry. Uh, you might read doing watercolor monotypes. It helps to have a thin layer of gum arabic on your plate rubbed in and let that dry because it gives the watercolor uh, gum arabic is a binder in watercolor and it gives it something to sort of cling to and not beat up on. But I don't have any gum arabic and I figured y'all might not have any at your house either. So I'm going to try Dawn dishwashing liquid because I read online that some folks use that. So I'm going to take some watercolor over here, just a little simple set. And we'll see how it works. So again, this half is sanded, this half is unsanded, this half has dawn, this has no dawn. So I'm just going to, so I think one of the things with watercolor is you may not want to, the more you play with it, the more it might beat up, especially on the um, dishwashing liquid. So we'll see if the sanding texture of the plate does anything, um, gives it some other effect we might like. So I'm gonna quickly just sort of play with putting some watercolor on here. And the nice thing about doing a watercolor monotype is you can take, you know, you have your small set of watercolors and you can take them outside and kind of work on en plein air, if you will. So you could create sort of a whole, uh, it's portable so you can go outside, you can go somewhere, and do a little watercolor painting and let it dry. You can totally let your watercolors dry, bring it back to the house or where you're going to print because as I'll show you, you're going to let the watercolor dry and then mist your paper and then the moisture, the wetness of the paper will reactivate the watercolor uh, to print on your paper. So you can take it out, you can work on an image and then print it later. So I'm going to just do this little demo, adding some watercolors to the plate to see if it makes any difference with the Dawn dishwashing liquid on it or if there's any reason why you might want to sand the plate or not, if you get any texture, or if it holds the watercolor better, or if just a plain plate works just fine, if we see any differences. So you can kind of play around with this. And then I'm going to let it dry. And then we'll come back. And I'll show you how to print it. All right, we're back. And when we left this plate, uh, I had finished and now it's dry. And I tried a couple things with seeing if sanding made any difference with the watercolor, as well as putting on some dish soap to see if it gave it something that the watercolor would stick to a little bit. I don't know if you can see this, but interestingly enough, on the side that's sanded, the watercolor sort of spread out into those lines a little bit. So it kind of blurred a little bit more. And where I didn't sand it, the watercolor stayed in place better. So maybe sanding for watercolor monotypes is not the thing to do unless you like the effect. Now, one of our recent grads, Mary Gordon, whose work I'm going to show you, I believe she would sand her monotype plates when she would be doing reductive uh, plates because she liked the ink, kind of the scratches that were in the work, the random kind of marks it made. And I'll show you some of her work. So there are things you can try where it might add more marks to the plate that you like. So this is dry now. The watercolor is dry. And what will activate it to print is we're going to dampen the paper. So I set out some paper towels here. There's a couple different ways you can do it. I'm using the Thai Kozo paper. And one thing when tearing the Thai Kozo paper, when you're going um, one of the ways against the grain, it's a little bit harder to start it. So sometimes what I'll do is when I have the ruler down, you can actually take a little razor blade 
and make a little bit of a cut so it already starts. And then when you start to tear, it tears easier. So I have here a Mr. Bottle and you can use a spray bottle. You could actually dampen paper towels and sort of blot the paper in between it. But one thing I found, so what I'm doing is I'm just misting the paper, right? Because you want it to get pretty damp. But you don't want it to be really, like you don't want to have any extra water on the paper um, because I've done an experiment and you can see that the, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but there's a lot of sort of wetness, there's a sheen to it. So if I did it on there now where there's really extra water on there, the watercolor sort of blobs out. And if you like that effect, then don't blot your paper. But if you want it more sort of true to what you did on the watercolor, then you'll want to blot it, which is why I'm spraying this against paper towels that blots it a little bit. And then I'm going to take an extra paper towel and blot the extra off. You could also use a bath towel. You can blot with a bath towel. So I just have paper towel here. You can kind of see that it's pretty wet. So I'm going to take a paper towel here and just blot the extra off. So my paper is still really damp, but it's not, doesn't have sort of pools of water on it. And you have to be careful with the water at this point because it's pretty fragile with the, because it's pretty damp. And now, and I just cut my paper, uh, I tore it the size of the plate. So I'm going to use the plate as my registration. And you can do this with a thicker paper as well. One of the nice things about using Japanese paper, and here's so you can see a little better, is you can see through it. So you can kind of see where your ink is. So I'm gonna take a paper towel to kind of blot on top of this while it's on the block. Move this one out a little bit. Okay. And let's see what we have. All right. So here's our print from our block, the monotype. And this side, it's kind of delicate now that it's wet. This side, you can see this like light blue out here smeared a lot more because the sanded part of the plate kind of pulled the watercolor away. It smeared a little bit more in here and it stayed put a little bit better on the other side. So, and then looking at my plate where I put, uh, the dishwashing liquid is up here. I don't know if it really made that much of a difference. So you can kind of play with it to see if you just use your plain block with your watercolors, how it prints. So right there, watercolor monotype. And then just let your paper dry. And the, so this is one that I did earlier on Japanese paper. This is already dry. This is a different one. So it might dry a little bit cockled just because the paper was damp. If you want it to be completely flat again, just put it underneath some weights, put a piece of newsprint on it and some heavy books um, and your paper should flatten out. Uh, but there you go with watercolor monotype, right? So another fun way of transferring ink onto the block. And there still is a little bit more there. So I guess you could actually print a ghost of watercolor or you could just right now start painting another one if you wanted to sort of use that as a matrix to start with and do another watercolor. Or if you're ready to start over, just wash it off with water and you're done. So easy, watercolor monotype. And I'm gonna show you now, I'm gonna put up on the screen the difference between if you blot the paper and if you don't blot the paper. 
because you'll just see it smushes out differently. And if you like the look, you can see in this print where it sort of just sort of is a little more almost tie dye looking. That's an effect that's perfect. Well, that's fine if you like it. But if you want your watercolor to sort of hold its own a little bit more, make sure you blot the paper and you don't have extra water on it. The next two prints I'm going to show you are a couple of older prints that I did on the Cortona Studies Abroad program, which if you can do, I highly recommend go on the Cortona Studies Abroad program. But I made these prints with some collage elements and some etchings, and then I actually did, as you can see, uh, the fruit in each of these prints is a little watercolor monotype that I made that I let dry, and then I cut it out and collaged it onto the print. So while you're making these monotypes, they may be parts of collage elements that you use in a bigger piece rather than a finished element in and of itself. So here's another way that you can use a watercolor monotype um, as part of another work, or it can be a finished work unto itself.